Hey guys, my name is Chantel, welcome back to my channel, and today is day 12 of 12 days of anime, and Merry Christmas you guys! <laughs> um, today I'm probably just taking it easy and spending it time with my family because as I said before in my day 11, uh, we just do all our festivities the day before, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and are just... Yeah, I mean, enjoying it with the people you love and people you... Yeah, I'm, I don't know what... But yeah, I hope you guys are having a really good day today. And um, let's go ahead and get right to it. So today, for my last and final video, I'm going to go ahead and talk about my favorite animes for this year. Um, I have a lot on my list because I feel like I watched quite a lot this year. But yeah, I mean... There was a lot that I really enjoyed this year, mostly in the fall season. I feel like the fall season really did like a spectacular job um, with everything that's been out there. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna stop talking and rambling and just get right to it. <laughs> All right, so the first one on my list is Violet Evergarden. So this one, you guys have probably already heard constantly about. So I am not going to talk about it too much because Every other YouTuber and their moms have like talked about this at this point um, which I mean it deserves to be talked about because it's such a beautiful anime um, both story-wise and visually so I mean yeah I, I loved it like everything that has been said like is basically how I feel I mean there's not really much more <laughs> that I could add to it so yeah I mean if you guys haven't checked it out check it out because you're missing out <laughs> The next anime I'm going to talk about is Darling in the Frank. So I know not a lot of people like this one, specifically like the second half. But me, I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, I mean, I can see where people are coming from when they said they didn't like it. But me personally, I really enjoyed it up until the very end. I really love the characters in this. And I think that's probably why I loved it the most. It's because of the characters. We just, you grow to love these characters that you just kind of want to see like what's gonna happen with them to the end and that's basically how I felt. I just wanted to know what their lives were gonna be like at the very end of the episode and yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, Drawing in the Franks was a wild ride for sure though. <laughs> Next one on my list is Gawkin Babysitters. So I really love this one. This one is on Crunchyroll and in English I think it's called School Babysitters. So yeah, I mean, this one, I definitely think it's not for everybody, but if you like Barakumon, um, Sweetness and Lightning, and Poco's Udon World, I definitely think that you guys will like this one if you watch any of the three, specifically Sweetness and Lightning, because they're so similar in a way, and once you see the, this um, anime, you will see why I say that. But basically, what Gakken Babysitters is about is about like these two brothers that lose their parents in a plane crash and they get taken in by this uh, chairwoman from the academy which by the way she's also lost a few like her family members I think it was like her son and um, daughter-in-law in this in the same plane crash and like I said she takes them in the only condition is that for the older brother to work in the daycare center which is where he leaves his like little brother at and that's pretty much it with Gawkin Babysitters it's just a, basically about these two brothers one cutesy little baby brother that's named Kotaro and then you have the older brother Ryuchi they're basically kind of dealing with the loss of their parents and how to pretty much adjust because Ryuchi is basically now the caretaker of his little brother and he has to figure out how to you know, take care of, not, well not that he can't take care of him, he just has to deal with like things that his parents used to do for him that he didn't really think about. And it's really cute and fluffy, but it also gets really emotional sometimes, especially in the very first episode when his little brother Kotaro gets sick, he starts to realize that his, like it starts to set in that his parents are really really gone. And it's so emotional. We get like these little bits of emotion like throughout the whole series. Like all of a sudden it'll be cute and fluffy and then like BAM! You were, it's a bunch of feels. <laughs> Next one I want to talk about is Sanrio Danshi. I loved Sanrio boys. This one was very unexpected and I wasn't going to pick it up initially. 
but because of Meg Love's cute here on YouTube, she was constantly talking about it and like she was excited for the anime. And I was like, you know what? Let me check it out because she's always constantly talking about it. Well, when it was going to air and um, yeah, I loved it. I really enjoyed it overall. Like it was really, really good. I mean, you have cute boys that love Sanrio characters and I really love that because they get to bond like over their love of Sanrio characters, but we also get to see like what these boys are like too. And I love that we get like one episode focusing on each boy. Like I love that because we really get to know them and connect with them. So yeah, I thought that was really nice. So let's go ahead and move on to the next anime that I'm gonna talk about and that is Hina Matsuri. So Hina Matsuri, I'm not gonna talk too much about it because I already made a video on it, so yeah. So next one on the list is Persona 5 The Animation. So this one, I know not a lot of people liked it, but I personally really enjoyed it for what it was because I think the anime give, gave us some things that the game didn't. Like they just, I don't know, like it kept things interesting because they added like little things here and there that just, like I said, it made like the anime have its good points but it also you know the anime wasn't perfect they did have its flaws i mean with like the all out attack looking kind of funky but like i really liked it because we were able to dive into ryuji's confidant and um makoto's and i can't remember who else is but um i really wish we get to dive into like more of those because it was very very like I don't know, like, how do, what's the best word to describe it? I made like a whole video about this, talking about it. So if you guys are interested, I will put a link down below or like up here if I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> um, but it will be like in my end card as well if you guys want to check that video out if you guys already haven't. Anywho, let's move on to the next one, which is Cells at Work. So this one, I really, really enjoyed. This one was such a fun one and we basically get to learn how our cells work. <laughs> And it was really interesting to see like how um, creative this was, like how, I don't know, like it was just so creative and interesting and fun and you, like I said, you get to learn about your body, which was pretty educational even though I don't remember like most of it. <laughs> but like I said, it was a really, really fun anime that I truly enjoyed. Alright, next one on my list is Golden Conway, which is another one that isn't really talked about. Which I'm really surprised because it's really, really good and I love Golden Conway. Um, it's like a historical anime, but also it's just... Golden Conway is wild and crazy and I love it because you just... I don't, I don't know what I expected going into this one. Which, by the way, I watched the dub for this one um, because um, when it was airing, it was already like halfway through the season and almost over. So I was like, you know what, let me just check it out, see if I like it. And I'm so glad I gave it a chance because I love it. It's so freaking hilarious. Um, it took me by surprise, so I'm really glad I gave it a chance. And I'm pretty behind on season two right now, though. <laughs> I need to catch up. Next one on my list is Bloom Into You, which, by the way, again, not going to talk about too much because um, I made a whole video on it. So if you guys want to know my thoughts on it and, why, and just, I guess, why I like it. Um, I'll put link down below. Next one on my list is also another one that I made a video on which is World of Colors. Once again, I'm not gonna talk about it too much because I already made a whole video about it. So yeah. Next one on my list is Banana Fish and oh my goodness, I love Banana Fish. It's, I honestly, first of all, let me say like it was not a good idea for me to binge the, like the last, what was it, four or five episodes. I don't know what I was thinking because at the end of it I was like, <laughs> I was so heartbroken and I was just like, what the heck did I sign myself up for? <laughs> but I really enjoy it. Banana Fish is a wild ride and oh my gosh, it's it's so good, you guys. And I'm really happy that it's being talked about, you know, besides it being on Amazon because usually the anime that end up on Amazon don't get talked about, but Banana Fish um, has been fantastic that even though it's on Amazon, we're over here like talking about it and like, ah, like I'm so happy because it deserves all the love that it has. Basically, Banana Fish, it's in New York and we have our main character, Ash Lynx. He's like the boss of like their, like, what was it, like gang? 
Is that the right word to call them? <laughs> uh, sorry if I'm like all over the place. But yeah, he's like the boss of his gang and everything. And he basically kind of runs New York. The reason why he runs this city is because of the guy that he lives with, which is Papadino. Papadino is not a good man. And you start to learn things about Ash that's like very, very, very sad and traumatic. And it's you just feel really bad for him. And basically, like, in his child, his childhood was just not a good, it was just not good overall. And it's pretty sad. Like, once you see the episodes yourself, you're like, ooh. And you can't help feel bad for Ash. And you start to see, like, well, of course he's going to end up the way that he is. And one day, Ash finds, like, this little white powder that this guy hands him over. And all he knows is that the, la the guy that, before he died, he said banana fish and Ash just kind of makes it his mission to find out what exactly banana fish is. Is it a person? Is it a drug? We don't know at the very beginning. And he tries to do like all of his research and everything that he can um, to know exactly what this is. What does it mean? And along the way he also meets Eiji and these two slow, like not slowly, but like instantly become friends. and. These two start to like love and respect each other and will do anything for one another and it's very beautiful um, to see like th that relationship grow as the episodes go on and it's been really interesting to see like everything going on with Banana Fish and it's been such a journey and now we only have one more episode um, as I'm filming this. I'm pretty sure like the episode will have already aired or is about to but yeah like banana fish has been a wild ride and it hurts a lot and I have a feeling that I'm just gonna have to like drink a whole bottle of wine by myself at the end of it because Jesus Christ I don't know if I'm like already numb to the pain but at the end of this I was just like all right <laughs> um I think I talked a lot about banana fish I'm really sorry about that anyway um, let's go on to the next one on my list, which is a Zombie Land Saga. So, Zombie Land Saga, the only reason why I picked this up was because of Mamoru Miano. He was in this and he did like um this video that Crunchyroll posted, which I was like so confused by at first because I was hoping that Mamoru Miano would tell us a little bit about what Zombie Land Saga was, but like in the video he's like, you know, you'll understand why I'm dressed like this and why I'm acting like this once you see Zombie Land Saga. And after I watched the first few episodes, I was like, now I understand why he was dressed like that and acting like that and kind of crazy. <laughs> um, but you can definitely tell in that video that he did um, that he was having a lot of fun with it. and. This has got to be one of my favorite performances that Mamoru Miano has done. Like, I mean, hello, hi, I am someone that loves Mamoru Miano and his, like, voice acting and stuff. I mean, I got freaking pictures of him from the CDs that I bought from him. But anyway, I, Jesus Christ, like, I think that says a lot just how much I really love Mamoru Miano. He's, like, one of my favorite voice actors, like, my number one. Um... But anyway, plus he has like a beautiful singing voice, but that's not what we're here to talk about. I get carried away when it comes to Mamoru Miano, but anyway. Um, his voice as Kotaro is just amazing, you guys. Like, if you guys love Mamoru Miano, definitely check this one out because, oh my gosh. Like, I definitely think um, this anime feels like something that Mamoru Miano himself made. Like, I don't know, like, they, that's just the feeling that I get just because of how Mamoru Miano is because he tends to be very silly and goofy but it also I feel like that him um, his performance like with Tatsumi Kotaro as I said it's one of my favorite performances that I can't even speak one of my favorite performances and um, I think everybody agrees with that like it's probably one of his best things that he's ever done because he just does such a fantastic job and like every week I always look forward to it because oh my gosh you just you just never know what to expect but anyways with zombie land saga as I was saying we di I didn't know exactly what to expect because the visual didn't tell me too much the PV didn't tell me a lot either um, it made it seem like it was gonna be like this horror anime and it turns out it's not and so it's like this idol anime but I really like it because it takes a turn to like your usual like idol anime 
and makes it like really really interesting and fun and you get to learn about these characters and um, you know how they died and everything it's been really interesting and such a fun surprise like oh my gosh I love this one so much you know besides the CG animation like randomly in there but I mean they haven't picked that up in a while so hopefully they stay away from it because like anytime I see that like it kind of just ruins the moment because it just looks like completely everything's 2d and then all of a sudden you get like this wanky ass CG animation it's like mm -hmm. You. <laughs> but anyway, that's it was Zombieland Saga. I feel like I would talk in, on and on and on with this one. But anyway, so let's move on to the next one, which is Devilman Crybaby. So this one is definitely pretty dark, but I really, really liked it. And um, it's on Netflix and it was like the main one that everyone and their moms were watching when it first came out on Netflix. Everyone really really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed this one. It was really nice to see but it's definitely not for the faint of heart so if you're not into like these dark th darker themes then I don't think it would be for you. All right so I got a few more to talk about and then I will be done. I promise you guys. I'm trying to go through this as best as I can and as quick as I can. Okay next one is Bunny Girl Senpai. So this one I actually did not pick up at first because the visual alone kind of like threw me off like I was just put off by it I was like ah it's gonna be about bunny girls like it's not gonna be anything interesting but I was so wrong after hearing everyone talk about it and how much they loved it and how much it was just so much more than what the visual put it out um which I'm really 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 glad I gave it a shot and it's it's so emotional and so beautifully done I love it like each episode I always look forward to it to see like what's gonna happen next and um yeah, it's been really interesting to see like all these characters getting to know them and them having to deal with their puberty syndrome. It's been really interesting to see like how everything turns out, like why they got it and what can they do to fix it. It's been very, very interesting. Alright, so I have two more anime that I want to talk about and let's go ahead and talk about with Surune. So Surune is another one that's not being talked about and I feel like it should. And I absolutely love this one. I actually talk about this one on my channel, which I haven't been for the past three weeks, and I'm so sorry about that. It's just I've been so focused on my 12 days, 12 days of anime videos and trying to get them out as best as I can and, um, you know, just have them out on time. So that's why I haven't talked about it on a weekly basis so far. But oh my gosh, this one has been really, really nice, especially if you like anything that's been done by Kyoto Animation. I definitely think you'll like it. So with Sorena, it's basically about archery and um, what's the best way I can describe it? I mean, it's Kyoto animation, first of all, so it's going to have beautiful animation and visuals. Um, but let me go ahead and tell you guys what it's about. And this is about our main character, Minato. So we learn that he has something called target panic, which target panic is basically he's not able to hit the target. Um, for whatever reason and we start to get to see like as the episodes go on like how he got it and when he got it like how it like developed it's been interesting to see and he basically kind of just put archery down and he hasn't touched it ever since and it isn't until he meets this character named Masa or Masaki is his full name that he's just like taken away by his beautiful form and how he shoots his arrows and everything and he learns that he too once had target panic and these two basically kind of bond and he's also the reason why he ends up picking up archery once again and I really love their relationship because they both end up like moving forward from what's going on in their lives and I really like that and so far it's been really really good. Um, I love all the characters, they're, they're such fun characters but I will say like the first few episodes mainly focuses on like the whole um, trying to form like a bond with all their teammates and stuff like that and then after that it gets more into like the characters. Well, the characters and the matches, so yeah. I mean, not much to say about Suruna because it is still going on. I don't know how many episodes it has and on top of that it started late in the fall season, so yeah, I'm really excited to see how this anime is going to turn out and if you guys want to hear my thoughts on it, um, check back on my channel weekly and see if I post a video on it because right now <laughs> I haven't been posting about it and I feel really bad because I've been wanting to talk about it for so long and I just haven't had the time. 
so yeah anyway let's go ahead and talk about the last one on my list which is run with the wind which is also another one that no one's talking about and i'm really surprised that no one's talking about this one because it's really a good anime especially if you love sports anime like i definitely think that you'll like it so i'm really surprised how a lot of people are watching it or talking about it all right so with run with the wind let me go ahead and tell you guys a little bit about it so run with the wind is basically about our main character kakuru um we start to learn a little bit about him as the episodes go on but for you know he's a fast runner and he meets this guy named Haiji and he basically like helps Mal in the first episode and gives him a place to stay but there's a reason why Haiji lets him stay and he ends up basically like for <laughs> I don't like basically kind of tricking everybody into joining the like track running club whatever the heck you want to call it and all the boys are like what like this wasn't like the deal like this isn't happening blah blah, blah. and they're like oh when you signed up your registration form this is what you signed up for and everyone's just kind of shocked about it it's just like what the heck is going on and i really love it because Haiji's character is so fun and funny especially in the first few episodes because he basically like i don't want to say like he basically like blackmails everyone into like the uh into the club which is funny because i don't know like it's so funny to see like how he gets everyone to join he's like you need to do this or else blah blah, blah. Like, it's it's really interesting to see like how he tries to get everyone to like do this for him and you know that's how it is in the first few episodes and then after you know everyone starts slowly to find their own reasons why they want to run and I think that was really beautiful because now it's like they're not being forced to be here and they're doing it because they want to. So yeah, um, I'm not gonna talk too much about Run With The Wind because as I said, it's still going on. So yeah, I mean that's all of my favorite anime this year that I've watched. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing me ramble on about every single anime that I've loved this year. It's I feel like this was such a long list so I'm really sorry if this ends up being a really really long video. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed, and yeah, so that's it for 12 Days of Anime. I've really enjoyed doing it this year. I'm really, really glad I decided to do it this year once again. This is my second year in a row, and I love meeting all of these new people on here and like communicating with them, talking with them, and, and watching everyone's video. It's been such a blast, and I cannot wait to do it once again next year. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's been really fun, and... Yeah, so with that being said, that is it for 12 Days of Anime, and I will see you guys with my regular videos from now on. Bye! Also, Merry Christmas once again, guys, so yeah. Bye! <laughs>